Hi, hey there everybody, how's it going? It's April 1st, Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. I'm Todd Knock, professional comic book artist. Thank you for joining me for today's Post-it Pop Art uh, live stream as we're gonna draw Stargirl, Stargirl from the Justice Society um, at DC Comics. Uh, she has a brand new show coming out in May. I'm very excited for that. I've been a big fan of the Stargirl character since she was introduced into the DC universe about 20 years ago, uh, cr uh, created by uh, Jeff Johns, uh, legendary DC Comics writer Jeff Johns. So I'm very happy for him, very happy this character is gonna get her own series. I look forward to watching that on the CW. I think it'll also be on the DC Universe app as well. Um, so I thought for today's character, since it's a Justice Society character, why not draw one of my favorites and that's Stargirl. So uh, hopefully you're doing well during this coronavirus stay at home season. Hopefully you're staying well, staying healthy and staying in uh, upbeat spirits. Thanks for joining me. We're gonna have some fun. Maybe you'll learn a tip or trick or two for your art. Feel free to draw along. You don't have to draw on a post-it note. You don't have to use the same tools I do. Use whatever you have on hand and use whatever skills you have. It's all about having fun here and maybe learning a little bit of something. So uh, let's flip the camera around and let's get to drawing. All right, just have to readjust the rig here. And the lighting, one moment. There we go. Hopefully I can address some of your questions and comments as I draw, but a lot of the focus does go into the art here. So um, we'll just, what is wrong with this light? There we go. Sorry for the jostling. There we are. Okay. So starting with pencils, got my trusty rusty Unikura Toga 0.3 HB lead mechanical pencil. HB lead is my preferred lead on a light blue post-it here. So we're gonna start with a head shape here, start with that circle. So we're drawing a teenage girl here. So, um, so I'm gonna keep in mind certain aspects of how to construct her face and facial features and hair and such. We're gonna go for a more youthful look than a full-grown adult person, adult woman. So that might mean a little bit larger eyes, not significantly larger, don't wanna to go too large, but definitely wanna to try to capture a youthful expression. Maybe a more slender neck and if this was a full body piece, we'd have more slender. We're not necessarily, well, for, for Courtney Whitmore, yeah, they'd be a, a bit slender. She's, superheroics keep her pretty fit, but um, body types vary from character to character. So we always keep th those things in mind is what I'm meaning to say. So keep that in mind. Like I wouldn't make, um, Courtney Whitmore here as buff as like a Wonder Woman, that would be uh, a, a different body type. So I'd want to keep those types of things in mind. I don't want to make Courtney, even though she stays in shape, she's not like overly buff, overly ripped. She, um, so, so those are certain aspects I want to keep in mind. So we got her eyes and then the, she wears a mask. So we have the eye holes of the mask. And then the mask kind of arcs around underneath like that. She has a bit of a little pert little nose. Without the mouth line, we're going to give her a smile. Oftentimes in the comics, she wears braces. Or at least when she first debuted, she had braces. Actually, I'm gonna rework that. I think I have my nose set a little too low. So I'm gonna readjust here. 
This is why we sketch at the beginning so that we can course correct for any any um, changes we need to make. It's easier to make changes at this stage than when you've gotten to full tight pencils or going into finished inks. So let's try that again. There we go. Her mouth was setting a little too low on her face, and I did not like the way that looked. So we were talking about her braces. I do not think braces will translate in a illustration this small and with a, 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 a with a with a subtle smile like this. If she's doing a really big smile, like in the uh, the live stream preview pick here, the title card, which will be changed by the time you're watching this on replay, for those of you watching on replay, um, then there's room to fit in the braces. But uh, right here, it's so small, so subtle, the braces I don't think would translate very well. It would just, it's a stylistic choice to um, leave those out for clarity of communicating the vision. Okay, so let's figure out where her ears are. Her hair, depending on her hairstyle here, will cover up her ears, or could cover up her ears. But I like to know where the ears are regardless, because it's I call it drawing all the way through. You want to draw all the way through so that you know where every aspect of the character is, so that everything fits as it should. We're going to figure out her hair here. Since I know where the top of the skull is, I'm going to put some hair just above that. I'm going to have it parted here on the side. And then flowing it down to her shoulders. Maybe a little bit over her shoulder. And then down the other side here. So I'm just creating those chunky shapes and pulling strands through. Especially the further, further back we go with the hair, there's um, going to be more shadow, so more density of line can help create more depth. In the aspects of her hair. You can see here some of the parts of her face are going to be covered up by this. By her, I guess, kind of bangs. At least the, the, the part of the the hair kind of flowing over back this way. So it's going to cover up part of her eye, part of her ear, but it's good to know where those parts are so that everything fits together. Now she has her mask that goes up to her forehead. So I'm keeping that in mind too. Let's see, I think we'll see a little bit of her shoulder star. She has stars on her shoulders. So we'll see at least the top part of that. We'll find a way to work in some more stars in the background maybe to really, um, bring home the star girl aspect. Now we're putting in the irises. So big irises, the color part of the eye, and pupils, the black part of the eye, with a little highlight in the eye to give it a little sparkle, a little twinkle, a little life. In the eye. 
think I want to do a color hold line work for this one as well. That's where I use colored microns to ink. But if you just have a black pen that you plan on inking with, that's totally cool. But if you have colored pens or colored pencils and want to do the line art like I'm doing, please feel free. Like I said at the top of the show, and at, at most every show, I try to remember to say, this is all about having fun. All right, so that's got the pencils down. So let's move into, now I'm just doing some rough pencils here, as you can see, those are pretty rough pencils, but uh, it gives me enough information that I can now move into ink. So I'm using a brown micron for her blonde hair. The brown will translate well for the, brown, or for the blonde. I'm starting with the first chunk that kind of overlaps her her forehead and eyes. When am I going to color that Gambit and Rogue piece from that previous live stream where I did the line art? Um, as soon as I can, maybe this weekend, because weekdays are dedicated to post-it note art, the post-it pop art live stream. So hopefully I will get to um, the finishing that Gambit and Rogue uh, maybe this weekend. We'll see how things go. So make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel here and your notifications are set to alert you. We're using the same brown for her skin tone as well, uh, for the line art for her skin tone. Um, so that when I do schedule that live stream, you don't miss out. But hopefully I wanna get that done as soon as I can. Get, the, get Rogue and Gambit colored up as soon as I can. Thanks for uh, tuning into the line art live stream and being excited about seeing part two. Now I'm just coming in with nice curvy, curvy lines, those chunky shapes. See as we're moving behind her, her chin and her neck, more concentrated lines. I'm just following right up the top of her head. Now, a lot of this hair, um, the way I draw hair has come from studying real life hair. I still love to look up uh, photo reference of hair, different hairstyles, and, uh, and, you know, try to find ways to illustrate them, to see how the hair flows. Hair can be so much fun. You know, it's like a puzzle, trying to figure out that puzzle of how does the hair flow. Some hairstyles can be super challenging. It's like, how does that puzzle fit together? I can't figure it out. It's like cracking a code. Um, but it's so much fun when, when it starts to, when it starts to click. So, um, I know a lot of people have messaged me or posted comments saying that they have a hard time drawing hair. Totally understandable. Very common. It is challenging. It absolutely is challenging because it is, hair can be so different. It can have different textures. It can have different forms. It can have different, uh, shape, flow, um, depending on the type of person, person's hair. You know, that's why looking at photo reference is so good, depending on the type of person you're drawing, um, the type of hair they have, um, the type of haircut, hairstyle is a huge part of it as well. Um, that's why I think I find women's hair to be um, oftentimes the most interesting to draw because it's so versatile. There's some cool hair, men's hairstyles for sure, but, um, but women's hair uh, can get so, so, so interesting with, uh, some of the hairstyles that, that, uh, that can come about, especially through the ages. If you look like a, a like a 1920s hairstyle to a 1960s to a 1980s to even up into 2000s, you know, there can be some really interesting variations in hairstyles, especially the eighties. Whoo! We had some big hair going on in the 80s. All right, so we've got pretty much got the uh, line work done for the hair there. Let's. Like I said, I was using, using the same brown for the uh, for her skin tone. It'll pair well with 
the colors I'll use for her skin. So trying to keep a very youthful shape to her face, curved lines for the jaw and chin. Not, not, not a hard lined jaw. Want to keep it a little more youthful. Not too youthful though. I don't want her to look like she's, you know, an elementary school child. Uh, so I'm trying to capture that teen flavor. I'm going to use a dark blue for her costume parts. So let's go ahead and do some of that. I'm just using dark blue for her mask. So the mask part is dominant. So that will be the lines around her eyes. And the mask part that goes over her face. There we go. And then let's go ahead and, while we have the blue, tackle the uh, costume here. So down the neck and the shoulders. A little bit of that clavicle, the shoulder bone. Down this other shoulder. Stars will be white, or at least this one star we see. So we'll just go ahead and put a blue outline there. Let's see, we go down the other shoulder. We might see a little bit of the star on that shoulder as well. Now we need to go to a, a finer point micron. I was using the uh, brown micron. I was using the, uh, the 0 0.5. Now I'm using the double 0 0.5. And let's ink her nose, the pert little nose here. Not using every line that I illustrated, just a few, like around the nostrils and the tip of the nose. Don't want to draw in the bridge. That would make her nose look a little too strong. That might work for like a Wonder Woman type character, but not for Courtney here. Now I'm going to use some pink for her lips. So I'm going to use this 01. So do the bottom part of the top lip first. Then up, that little teardrop at the center, and then back over. Now for the bottom lip, thicker line at the bottom of the lip because it conveys a bit of a shadow. And then let's use that brown here for the little, little cheek detail there. Now we're going to use some 01 Black Micron for her eyelashes. So we have those larger eyes, not too large. Again, we don't want to go too large, a little larger than, see, it's easier to compare her to Wonder Woman. If I was doing drawing Wonder Woman, it would be a uh, more of an almond shaped eye. We still have an almond shape going on here, but it's just a little, little more rounded to convey a kind of a brighter eyed youthful look for this character. And that's the thing we want to keep in mind is what is the character, who is the character we're drawing? What is their, what are aspects of their character or personality that we're trying to convey? A Wonder Woman personality, as well as not just her physical form, but her personality and character is a bit different than say like Stargirl, which might be different than Black Canary, which would be different from Batgirl. There might be some similarities, but there are also some differences. And can we, you know, keep in mind those differences, figure those differences out in our translation of that character. And that helps us kind of vary our character so they don't all look exactly the same. Now I'm coming in with some regular blue. It's not that dark blue I use for her costume, but a regular blue for her blue eyes.
And since the irises are black, we'll go back, back to the black micron. Put in the little black iris right in the center there. So she's really coming together here. Let's go back to that brown micron, and we're going to draw in the top of that eyelid. Because that would be a skin color. Make some little adjustments here and there. And that will take care of the line art for Courtney for now. So um, let me put my microns off to the side here as I grab my Copic sketch markers. Now I'll be using Copic sketch markers. You use whatever you have handy or, you know, whatever is in your art arsenal. Oh, but first we need to erase. So I'm using my kneaded art gum eraser here to erase. The graphite lines, they are no longer necessary. Many people say they have problems with the, the inks lightening. They get lighter. The ink line will get lighter when they erase. Try a kneaded art gum eraser. It can pull up the graphite without uh, pulling up too much of the ink and making it look too light, from my experience. Um, so give that a try. Just search kneaded, K-N-E-A-D-E-D, -E -E kneaded like you knead bread, not N-E-E-D, but kneaded as in the motion kneading, because we can knead it. You know, this is a kneading sort of motion here. Um, kneaded art gum eraser. K-N-E-A-D, the, the verb knead. Well, I guess the other word, any -E, -E, e d is a verb as well. So don't 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 pay attention to my English. Do as I say, not as I actually verbalize. So time to bring in some colors. So let's start with her skin tone. It's going to work a little darker than I would if it was uh, white paper, as I often do with these uh, post note illustrations. So I'm starting with an E zero two. I'm going to hit the darker parts of her of her. Um, face, the places that would be in shadow, even though this isn't necessarily my shadow color, it's where the darker part is, and we're just going to say the light is coming from above and a little to the left. So we can pick one side to have darker colors on, and one side that will, you know, these colors will merge or move towards a lighter side, if that makes sense. So that's the E02. We'll come in with some E01. So I'm considering each plane of the face. You've probably heard me say this in other illustration videos. I figure it bears repeating, especially for new viewers. Is we consider each plane, and plane by plane I mean each section of the face. So it's like under the eye is a plane, the cheek is a plane, the bridge of the nose, the tip of the nose, this section underneath the nose, the chin itself, along the jawline here, the ear, even the forehead, the side of the head. It's, they're all different angles. Each plane is an angle. So I'm at E00 now. So just working from dark to light. Leaving a little bit of the light color of the paper as a highlight, but not a big highlight. Just a little teeny tiny bit, especially at the tip of the nose. That was E00. Go put some pink, because I love putting pink in my noses. Some R20. Just right underneath there and around the tip of the nose. Definitely some here at the cheek. Really give her that youthful pink glow. Now sometimes here on the Copic marker paper is that, or on the post-it mar 
post-it note paper, when working with Copics, the ink will look darker wet, and then as it dries, it will lighten up. So sometimes we have to account for that as we go. A little hit pink here on the chin. Uh, DC comic, Marvel? Uh, if you're referring to uh, Stargirl here, she is a DC character. Uh, she is connected to the Justice Society. Um, she is a legacy character. She is... Um, she got uh, the Star Spangled Kid. There was a Golden Age superhero, uh, hero back from the World War II days, named the Star Spangled Kid. And uh, he has a sidekick named Stripesy. Uh, and uh, Stripesy, who wore a striped shirt, um, her, her mom remarried. When she got remarried, she married Stripesy. And, um, and Courtney found... Uh, Star Spangled Kid's uh, belt, which gave him his superpowers. So she, you know, put it on and she became Stargirl. And then her story just really went all sorts of cool directions from there. So that's just kind of the brief initial overview. Um, so now we're going to work on the blonde hair here. But she's a DC Comics character. She has a show coming out on the CW and DC Universe app here real soon uh, in May. E84, we're going to start with um, some of a khaki color and we're gonna put this like in the part there and the furthest parts away from the hair we're gonna work dark to light heading towards that healthy body and shine of a blonde haired sort of look we're gonna put a lot of this back here in the back of her hair it kind of helps pop the face and the the forefront forefront parts of her hair towards the foreground We're going to create depth. And blonde hair isn't just yellow marker. It's, um, in my study of hair, it's like I, I would, when I was really looking to see how to how I wanted to translate blonde hair and I was looking at photo references, like oftentimes with blonde hair, there's some brown in there or it, it, the, the, the sculpting of it moves towards brown as we get closer to the root or in the shadow areas. So I started incorporating this kind of khaki color instead of just going all yellow, and I found that my blondes, my blonde hair rendering, now some Y21, became a little more, uh, a little more believable. It looked a little more, more, a little more realistic. So I'm keeping in mind, I wanna keep a, a ring of highlight through here to show the form and shape of her head and the flow of the hair. So it's not just filling in a big chunk of yellow. It's keeping in mind shape and light and form to build a head of blonde hair. And a little Y double zero. It's a very, very light shade of yellow just to kind of blend everything through. Copic marker inks are made to react to each other, merge, blend, work very similarly to watercolor. So I take full advantage of that. All right, so let's uh, let's color her lips. Let's get, uh, get that smile colored in. So I'm going to start with some RV32 for our base. See, a little bit of a darker pink. We'll come in with some R85. Just to kind of shape out those lips a little bit. Gonna put a little brown in her uh, eyelid area. So we're gonna have some E13. right there on the eyelid. Let's color the blue of her eyes. So we're going to start with some B02. I'm going to go on each side of the where the highlight, where I drew in that highlight. I'm going to put a little blue right there. Actually, I want that to be a little darker. So go ahead, 
pop in just a tiniest bit of B04. It probably would have been a better color. I like, if I'm not quite sure what color to use, I like to start light because I can always go darker. Now I'm going to come in with some B01 for the other side so I get this nice dark and light blue sculpting to her eyes. All right, and now for her uh, mask and uh, suit, collar and such. Um, going to be doing some blues, working dark to light. Uh, Going to come in with some B06. I want a real true sort of superhero blue. So I'm going to hit all the shadow areas. So right along this side of her head, because we established the lights coming from this direction above and to the side a bit. Keeping in mind those planes of the face, angles of the face. So a light would kind of hit right there at the bridge of the nose. This hair would be casting a shadow. Now mind you, these aren't my shadow colors, but I'm working dark to light here. Starting off, then we'll come in with some grays for those realistic shadows like I like to do. Leaving some white open or uh, paper open here for where the light hits the cheek. So we're starting to sculpt out the head. We're getting a sense of that forehead feeling, that bridge of the nose. Now we're going to sculpt out her neck. So the chin would cast a shadow, right? We don't want her neck to look overly muscular, so we're going to be very careful how we translate that. Because there is a muscle there, but it's just not like a super duper muscle. Now, her hair and neck would be casting a shadow, so we'd have darker blue there. Same on this side, that hair is overlapping, so it'd be a little darker. So yeah, it can be very tricky to how, on how to color uh, a girl's neck. If we have a young girl, we don't want it to look like, we don't want her to have like a big Hulk neck. You know, that's, that's just too much musculature. But we still want to convey a sense of musculature because every neck has muscles to one degree or another. So now some B04. And we're just going to go from the dark into that open area just a little bit more. I want to let that blue of the paper be a part of the blue of her uniform. So this leaving the tiniest of uh, highlights running through there to create that, uh, that shape and texture and a little bit of eye candy. So now as we come in with this lighter blue, we're kind of delineating those muscles. We're kind of, there's still that sense of musculature, but it's not overly musculature. Over, overly muscular is the actual way I want to say that word. Don't have to use a lot of highlight here on her uniform, but some. Just a little tiny bit. So I'm leaving just a little bit of the paper there for a little bit of a highlight. Um, so let's see, I think we've hit all the color. Oh, I see a little bit under one eye that needs a little more color. So there's that E01 right through here. Kind of missed that spot. Need a little more, a little more skin tone there. Okay, so let's uh, add some shadow, some realistic shadow to Courtney here. So I'm going to use Cool Gray, starting with a Cool Gray 2. I'm going to put some right here in the upper part of the eyelid, because the light's coming down this way, and so the eyelid kind of kicks back. Right down this bridge of the nose, so we get a subtle sense of a bridge of the nose, but we didn't really uh, have to delineate that with, with line art. That ear is going to be covered by shadow, right here on the cheek. Just a little wisp right down here for that jawline. Here on the upper lip. 
here through the chin area, the bottom of the chin, just underneath the uh, bottom lip there. That ear's covered up by hair, so there'll be more of a shadow. Just a little bit there on the cheek. I'm gonna add a little bit more, a second coat here under the eyes. Another coat here underneath the nose. See, I think I can use the same cool gray too in her hair. So right underneath the folds there, through the, the part, and definitely back here behind this ear. Because light is, or direct light is not going to hit back there. So we really can create a shadow there. It's going to pop that face forward. It's going to create some depth. Some shadows here towards the bottom of the curls. The flow of the hair. And um, let's see, let's take this to a cool gray four for her mask and the blue parts of her suit. So underneath the hair there, a little bit on the side of the nose for that bridge. A little bit underneath that flap of hair. Same on this side, maybe a little bit on that part of the mask, that bridge, that side of the bridge of the nose. Definitely underneath that chin. Put a nice healthy chunk there. Why don't I use warm grays for the shadows? You know, I used to. I used to do that a lot until I was watching another artist's uh, video channel and I saw that he used cool grays for his shadows and they brought a more realistic shadow. Um, so I started switching to cool grays for my, my shadows despite warm or cool colors. I'll still utilize warm grays to a degree, but I really like how realistic the cool grays are. And if you wanna know who that artist is that, that I learned this from, his name is Ahmed Alduri. You can find him here on, on, uh, on YouTube. His last name is spelled uh, A-L-D-O-O-R-I, Ahmed Alduri. Fantastic artist, really great uh, tutorials, uh, really cool to learn from him. And uh, so yeah, so there's, uh, so I gotta give credit to Ahmed. I even got a chance to meet him at the, at the um, Long Beach Comic Con. He stopped by my table and said hi. So uh, really cool guy and uh, please do check him out. Using this uh, cool gray in the eye here and we'll use a little bit here in the teeth um, to create kind of uh, some shadow with the white. We're gonna come in with that white pencil for that one trick that I do. Oh, and we'll want to use some of this in the star here, sculpting out her shoulder. In fact, let's go ahead and use that white pencil trick now. So coming in with the white pencil, any brand will do. I'm using a Derwent Ink Tense white pencil. And you cover over that gray and the rest of the eye, the same here with the teeth, and it just lightens up that gray to just the right shade of light gray that I would want. So I have to go a little darker to account for the white pencil co coloring over it. And that's how we get white onto our colored paper. Um, so, background wise, um, I'm going to take my little light blue pencil here. It's, this is a, a Pilot Eno colored pencil with some uh, light blue pencil. I'm going to make some stars here in the background. Just randomly place st stars so we get even more stars here with Stargirl. You can use just a regular graphite pencil if you want. I just, 
In fact, it might even be kind of challenging for y'all to see the stars I'm making here. But for the background, I thought it might be a fun graphic element to have some, some stars here in the background. Oops, snap my lead there. It's okay, just a little click click, We're back in action. So different uh, shapes, different directions, or different size, they're all the, pretty much the same star shape, but just angling from different directions. Some of them might even be touching, overlapping. Okay. So that gives us some stars to work with here. Now I'm gonna start filling in the background. So let's let's use neutral grays here. We'll just go with it, start with a neutral six. So I'm gonna do a fade from top to bottom with star shapes in the background. This is the first time I think I've done this on a post-it note. So I'm experimenting right here. This is trial and error. Just, I have an idea, let's give it a whirl, let's see if it works. So I'm just coloring it up right up to those blue lines I made for these stars. Keeping in mind, I am going to fade from dark to light as I work my way down. So a lot to think about. That's some neutral six. Then we go to a neutral four. Just taking the marker line right up, right up to that uh, star shape, those, st those lines I use to make the stars. Neutral four, and then we're gonna go to a neutral two. So it fades out even more. as we just fade right down to the bottom there. So it just gives us some uh, texture in the background there. Some just some, uh, gives her some stars, even more stars for Star Girl in honor of her legacy to the Star Spangled Kid. So we can just leave them just like that. Gives, a little, gives the viewer a little something in the background but then she um, she uh, pops off the page. So now, time for the finishing move. Y'all know my finishing move, longtime viewers. The Uniball Signo White Gel Pen. Here we go. So I'm going to put my signature white outline around the perimeter of Stargirl here. Just taking that white line right up to the inked line, but not over the inked line. So I like that, how that white outline gives her some pop on this colored paper. And I'll 
let's put a little white highlight here where I had that little drawn, drawn in that highlight inner eye. Put a little white there. Put a little secondary highlight here on the other side. And that gives her eyes some crazy sparkle. Those eyes are, are popping now. They are popping. All right, now let's uh, put my name on here. To finish this off, let's see, I gotta figure out which space has the right amount of space for it. I think I can fit it right through here. Using my 0, 01 micron. Today is the first of April 2020. And there is Courtney Whitmore, AKA Stargirl. New show coming out on the CW and DC Universe apps. Um, character has been around the DC comics for just over 20 years. It's hard to believe she's been around that long. I remember when she first debuted uh, in her own solo series. She even got to guest star in some of the issues of Young Justice I did back when I was doing uh, the Young Justice series at DC Comics. So um, let's flip the camera around here and uh, we can wrap up this uh, broadcast. All right, let me plug back into the rig. We can wrap up here. Excuse me, gang. Click, click. There we go. How y'all doing? All right. Thanks for hanging out with me. It was so much fun getting to draw. Love Courtney Whitmore here. Very excited for her show. Can't wait to watch that. I think it's going to be great. Um, and if you're not familiar with Stargirl, yeah, make sure you check out the show then. You will probably fall in love with her too. She's a really cool character. She's uh, And Jeff Johns is a great writer. Loved uh, his comics. He and I actually got to do a couple of comics together, at least one issue of Superman together. So he's been a great friend. We both kind of broke into DC Comics around the same time. When I was doing Young Justice, he was doing uh, the Stargirl series. And uh, we met at the San Diego Comic Con because we were both guests of DC Comics that, that summer. And uh, that's when we became friends. We've been friends ever since. So uh, think highly of Jeff. He's a great guy and a fantastic writer as well. Fantastic creator. And he's done some really awesome stories there at DC Comics. So very, very happy for the success that we're seeing here with Stargirl. And hopefully her show is a big hit. Hopefully you're staying well here during this coronavirus stay-at-home time. Hopefully you're staying uh, healthy. Hopefully you're staying um, hopeful. Healthy and hopeful. Let's try to be healthy and, he healthy and hopeful. Easy for me to say. Healthy and hopeful. Um, Gang, there are a lot of people out there who are, you know, they have to go to work. They have to put themselves out there amidst the virus for the things they have to do, whether it be mailmen, garbage collectors, delivery people, um, you know, grocery store workers, pharmacy workers, doctors and nurses of all sorts, police, fire, fire, um, firefighters, people like that. Show your appreciation to anyone you encounter. If you're in, you know, in the uh, grocery store line, remember everyone's stressed, everyone's worried, everyone's you know, struggling in their own way. So keep that in mind and let's try to be good and kind to everyone we encounter. It's not always easy, but hopefully if we can try to put forth a little more good, that will spread and we can all encourage each other, whether we, we're friends, family, or strangers, so that we can endure through this time and uh, hopefully get back to uh, normal or maybe a new sense of normal, whatever uh, might come at the end of this season, which will hopefully be sooner than later. Whether you live here in the United States or you live in other countries, countries. Let's be kind and gracious to all those that we encounter who are trying to do their best to, you know, get through this season, whether it's through their work or through just trying to just make it day by day. Let's be kind. Let's be gracious. Say thank you. Just a thank you can go a long way to, you know, to your postal carrier, to the guy picking up, you know, your garbage off the street. You know, whoever it is, the, 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 the grocery store clerk who's ringing up your groceries or the guy who's trying to keep things stocked on the shelves. That's probably not an easy job to do right now, nowadays. So a little extra uh, effort of kindness can all support each other towards getting through this season. And uh, yeah, so thanks so much for hanging out with me. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something. If you like what you saw, please leave me a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment below. I love hearing your uh, thoughts and comments. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe to my channel and set your notifications to alert you the next time I'm going to do an uh, art brought live stream, which will be tomorrow, same time, same channel. And um, 
Uh, and yeah, so you don't miss out and you can join me here live. And if you're watching in replay, thanks for watching on replay. Um, that's about it. Hopefully you had fun and um, hopefully you learned something. So um, thank you so much for joining me. I need to sign off. I need to get to work. Got to get back to drawing the comics. And uh, yeah, so until tomorrow, I'm Todd Knock. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.